Welcome to 28storms.com. This is a Sunday afternoon update on this August 21st on Tropical Storm Irene. Irene is likely to develop into a hurricane within the next 24 hours, and it could still become a significant threat to the United States down the road. This is the 11 a.m. official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. The Hurricane Center still believes that this storm will pass directly over some of the biggest terrain of Hispaniola, which will limit the development chances over the next 72 hours, and in fact it will more than likely induce some weakening if it takes this exact track. And that's the reason why they only have this coming into the southwest Atlantic as a tropical storm, but then re-intensifying into a hurricane as it moves into southern Florida. However, it must be noted that there are some indications that Irene could take both a northerly track in the short and medium range, and that is because we have seen several shifts toward the north in the center's location over the last 24 hours and in fact we could now be facing a direct hit here in Puerto Rico from a strong tropical storm or borderline category one now if this were to occur and the storm takes a more northerly track then we still cannot rule out that this will pass to the north of some of the highest terrain here and that would be bad news for the United States as we will have a strengthening storm moving into the southwest Atlantic with plenty of time to develop over open waters and the Bahamas and that would greatly increase the probabilities of a major hurricane landfall. There has also been a pretty significant shift in the model guidance. Again, this is the red line denoting the official forecast track from the Hurricane Center, but notice where all of the spaghetti model plots are now located. They, they have shifted to the eastern side of Florida, more off the east coast, and are now implying more of a threat to the Carolinas this afternoon. We are closely monitoring the most recent reconnaissance data from the Hurricane Hunters, and the white circles denote the locations where the Hurricane Hunters were able to close off a center, and this is just more evidence that the center has been continuously relocating more toward the north, and those white circles are the locations of where the center has passed, and if we extrapolate the most recent one, we can see that the storm is more than likely going to continue on a west-to-west-northwest track directly over Puerto Rico. We are also closely monitoring the long-range radar out of San Juan, and we can now make out the low-level center of Tropical Storm Irene, and this can also give you the picture that this is moving in a general west to west-northwest direction, so a direct landfall along the Puerto Rican coastline is looking very likely. The original satellite imagery shows that Irene has become much better defined over the last 24 hours. We see that convection is on the increase, but they were temporarily down a little bit earlier. I'm talking about the thunderstorm activity, especially along the southern quadrant here, and that's due to some dry air intrusion, because once again, we still have a lot of dry air, especially to the north and east of the storm. But more importantly, notice this upper-level ridging located directly over the system, and a good indication of that is the fanning of the outflow, especially in the northern semicircle. So this is a very favorable pattern aloft, and once this begins to move away from the greater Antilles and into the southwest Atlantic, this upper-level ridge is expected to follow our storm, and that is when we can see some rather significant intensification into a very potent hurricane as it begins to near the southeast United States. Here is a more zoomed in view of Irene as it begins to move toward Puerto Rico. We can see that the center is becoming gradually better defined. We just have a little bit of lacking convection here, but the reconnaissance data does indicate that the surface pressures are beginning to lower quite a bit. And the big key to whether or not the United States will be impacted potentially by a major hurricane will be whether or not this inner core of the storm can avoid much of the higher terrain of Hispaniola and once again the models are trending a bit more towards just the northeast coast here which would mean that this storm will continue to intensify as it moves off toward the west northwest. We are now looking at the most recent run of the 12Z ECMWF. The model correctly initialized the tropical storm in the correct location so that is a good sign that the model will verify in the first 24 hours and here we go with the center now passing along the western half of Puerto Rico and then by 48 hours the storm is only expected to graze the northern half of Hispaniola with little to no weakening. Also notice we still have this long wave trough proje projected to be off the east coast of the United States by 48 hours and that trough should be the main reason why this storm should begin to gain a little bit more latitude which will also help it to avoid some more of the rugged terrain of Hispaniola and even Cuba. By day three, the storm is continuing to move west-northwest, but is now just to the northeast of the easternmost tip of Cuba. And then as we go into 96 hours, that trough is beginning to lift out, but we still have a weakness here along the U.S. eastern seaboard. So we're beginning to see a bend more toward the north with a little bit more of a northwest motion. And now we're beginning to see some rather robust intensification into a significant hurricane to the southeast of Miami, Florida. 
By day five, we notice that the storm is now moving more toward the northwest, and it's just to the east of Florida, so all interests along the Florida Peninsula need to still keep a very close watch on this system. It would not take much at all for these models to track just a little bit more toward the west and place almost the entire state in at least some of a risk. So here we are by day five, and now by day six, notice that the storm is now breaking through the ridge, and we have a major hurricane impact along the Carolina coast. We are now looking at the European model ensemble mean average and basically this tells us that the European ensembles are in general agreement with the idea that this will be more of a Carolina system. However, if we notice by day six, we see that there is still quite a spread anywhere from Florida through the Carolinas. The latest 12Z GFS is also in very similar agreement with the European run. We see our tropical cyclone is now expected to pass directly over Puerto Rico. And as we go into the 36 to 42 hour time frame, notice that this model is also taking it only along the northern coast of Hispaniola, not moving directly over the island as the models had originally shown within the last couple of days. And then as we go into 48 hours, we still have a very solid weakness across much of the western Atlantic, so we should begin to see more of a turn toward the northwest, and that is exactly what we see as we go deeper into the forecast model run. And also notice that the model is strengthening Irene into a significant hurricane across the central and northern Bahamas, and much like the European this model is taking it now just to the east of the Florida coast, so everyone is going to be on pins and needles here if this track were to verify, because once again, this storm is not expected to be very far from Florida whatsoever. And then this ridge continues to build back in toward day four and day five, so now we see more of a northwest track straight into the east coast here between Georgia and North Carolina. The GFS ensembles have also taken a similar shift. As we go into 24 hours, the storm is expected to be along the western half of Puerto Rico. And as we go into the three to four day period, all the ensemble members are in general agreement that this will be over the western Bahamas. And then we still have a weakness off the east coast. So as we go into day five, it's beginning to make that northerly turn. And then by day six, it's quite clearly moving into South Carolina. Now, if you recall in yesterday's video, the Canadian CMC was the most adamant about still taking this on a westerly track toward even the central Gulf of Mexico. But as we see in the 12Z run, now even this model is showing much more of a northerly track up the east coast. And in fact, it actually avoids much of Georgia and South Carolina. And it only shows this tropical cyclone scraping the outer banks of North Carolina before continuing on a more north-northeast trajectory. I think this model solution is a bit too extreme here with this trough. And I think that the more southern and western tracks closer toward Florida and the lower Carolinas is a bit more likely. So to sum things up this afternoon, this is looking like less and less of a Gulf threat with time. Although interest in the extreme eastern Gulf and especially the Florida Peninsula, I still advise you to keep a very close watch on this system as it would not take much for the models to ship back toward the west and put you under the bullseye for this tropical cyclone landfall. However, interests in the Carolinas are now expected to take a very close watch on this system. Right now, you have the greatest threat of being impacted by the system in the four to six day range. I would advise everyone from Florida to North Carolina to begin preparing now for a hurricane landfall. In the event that this storm does take a track toward your location, you want to beat the rush toward the stores now before things get crazy. And I expect the media to really begin to pick up on this system tomorrow especially if this were to avoid Hispaniola, because once again, that is the key to this being a major hurricane threat to the United States. So thanks again for visiting 28storms.com. We'll have another update for you later this evening, and then we will have more videos throughout this upcoming work week.